Hey, good morning, CPC family. How y'all doing today? Oh man, we're gonna call heaven down into this place today. We're gonna praise him, all right? Let's go. Come on, hands up. Hey. We bring our praise, you bring revival. We lift our hands, you lift our eyes up And where your love is found, there will be no fear Amen In God your kingdom come, your will be done here Hey, on earth as in heaven Spirit of God our hearts are wide open Jesus we need you now Come have your way in this place Break our walls down Spirit of God pour out On earth as in heaven Jesus we need you now We bring our shame chains into our freedom yes where your love is found there will be no fear oh god your kingdom come your will be done here right here in this place lord on earth as in heaven spirit of god
Why would I worry when giants come calling my name? My God is so much bigger than troubles I face. And why would I hunger for power, riches, or faith? My God is so much better than all of these things. So I won't be shaken, I won't be moved, my God is faithful, His promise is true, Ooh, I speak to the mountain, it's time to move. God is bigger, better, stronger, greater than you. My enemies scatter, cause they know the battle is done. Oh, my God is stronger, the victory is already And rose up on the third day Oh, my God is greater than death Hell and the grave Oh, I won't be shaken I won't be moved My God is faithful Suddenly I'm not afraid 
Cause you speak and freedom reigns. There is hope in every single word you say. Everything you say is life to me
cry today can we just lift our hands all across this place today and can we just lift our hands and saying that I'm available God I want to hear your voice speak today I want to know you're here but God more importantly I'm yours I'm available God use me God come on just tell him today in your own words. God, you can have my life. God, you can have my heart. God, I give you my family. God, I give you my work, my career. God, I give you every situation that I'm facing right now. God, I speak to the mountains, God, today. God, you can take that mountain. You can defeat that mountain. Every giant that's in your life today, just surrender it over. Lift it up. Here I am. Here I am. You can have it all. You can have it all. Here I am. Here I am. You can have it all. You can have it all. Let your heart cry today. Can you give him some praise this morning? Thank him for speaking to us today. Amen. You know, as I was thinking about that song earlier this morning, I was thinking about how wonderful it is that we have a chance and an opportunity to come here once a week and to take time away from our busy lives and to let him know that he is worth our time, he is worth our attention and that we are available in this moment. I think it's so important, no matter what we're going through, to take just a little bit of time regularly and to remind him that we are available, we are here to enjoy his presence. Welcome everyone, I'm Jared, I'm one of the interns here. It's my privilege to wish you a good morning. Thanks for hanging out with us. If you're new here, we hope you feel welcome. Um, if you call this place home, it's good to see you again. If you're joining us online, thank you so much for tuning in. A couple quick things before we move along with the rest of the service. If you are new here and you haven't been um, plugged in or if you have any questions that you would like for us to answer for you, you can text the um, word guest to 573-340-4037 or you can scan the QR code on the screen there. Secondly, giving is one of the ways in which we, we worship here. And here at CPC, we um, believe that it's um, it's important to our worship and we make it very easy for you to do so. You can text the amount that you would like to give to 84321. You can go online at yourcpc.church slash give. You can of course visit the drop boxes in the back of the sanctuary or you can mail in your offering to the address on the screen. Let's go to the Father in prayer. Lord, we love you today. We thank you today. Father, for all that you do for us, we're so glad that we could spend some time together and to let you know that we are here. Lord, we pray that you would bless our time with you and our offering. And Lord, as we move to the, uh, through the rest of the service, that you would open up our minds to understand, Lord, what you would have for us to learn from you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Welcome back, everybody. Me and Sarah are back to tell you what's coming up at CPC. 
Registration is now open for Canacook Campout. Canacook Campout is a five-day day camp experience in July for kids ages 5 through 12, where your kids will not only have a blast playing games and athletics, but they'll learn more about the heart of God. Spots are filling up fast, so go to yourcpc.church slash events to register. Starting next Sunday, which is February 19th, Connection Point will begin 21 days of prayer and fasting. A devotional book will be released to help you along your journey. Check out yourcpc.church slash fasting for info and details. And as a finale to our 21 days of fasting and prayer, CPC will have a night of worship on Saturday, March 11th. Join your CPC family as we come together with the worship team to sing songs and pray as a unified voice. MAD 2023 is March 12th. Well, what is MAD? It's a once a year giving opportunity for all of us at CPC to help make a difference in our community, our region, and the world. This year's goal, we are believing for 500,000. Please be praying how you can make a difference this year. There you go. Now you're up to date on everything happening at CPC. Now, let's get ready to learn a little bit more about discipleship. Okay, so being a disciple is looking for the truth. It is seeking answers for all the questions we have in our life. Sometimes it's difficult to hear the voice of God, but underneath it all, it really isn't if you just are still. You have to be still and listen to what God has to say. Sometimes it may be... You know, people may believe that it's a loud, booming voice, but it's usually not. You'll feel peace whenever you hear the voice of God. You'll you'll definitely feel peace. When searching for God's voice, you have to be real. You have to be passionate in the things you believe. Ask Him to speak to you and be patient. Stay in His stillness. Enjoy the peace you can feel when you're in His stillness and in His presence. Sometimes you won't hear an answer right away, but he will answer. He always answers. Um, We may not always hear what we want to hear. We may not always get the result we want, but God is still good. God is still God. Um, We have to seek him. That's probably that's probably the biggest the biggest thing. We have to seek him and. just search for him. We have to be hungry for his word. We have to read his word. That's where that's the word is God. You know, it's the it's the it's the it's inspired by God. Mm, somebody shout word. word. That that lady just laid a word on us this morning. Amen. Come on, let's give her a hand. What an incredible testament about being a disciple. Amen. Amen. So good to see you this morning. How many excited to be at church? Man, we're excited you're here. Let's welcome our online campus right now. We're excited you are here with us today. Come on. Hey, in-house, here's what I want you to do. I want you to look at two people right now and tell them, I'm so glad to see you this morning on Super Bowl Sunday. (laughs) Hey, and if you don't know someone you're sitting by, if you're a CPC partner, hey, take the first step and just introduce yourself. Let them know your name and just say, man, I'm glad you're here. Hi, I'm Chris. And and, and online, you can do that too. You can right now in the chat, just say hello to everyone else who's watching on any of our venues online. So uh, hopefully when you came in today, you received uh, your your message notes and grab those online. You can download them right now for any of meter outlets. And and, and listen, I love this season we're about to go into as a church. Now, if you've been with me for a few weeks, you've heard me say, I love January. January, I love that every year. It's such an amazing time. We have so many new people who check out our church and and we watch 65 family members walk across this stage one Sunday, dedicating their homes and their children to Jesus. We saw just a couple of Sundays ago, 43 people profess their faith in Christ through baptism on a Sunday morning. We're seeing God's spirit move in miraculous ways. Last week, Pastor Skyler came down and, and filled the pulpit. Did he not preach an incredible sermon? Can you let him hear it in case he's watching up in Chicagoland right now? Um, just, 
this is an awesome time. And we're about to go into a season that I am so pumped up about. Next Sunday, and I know, I know most of you, especially if you come from a Baptist background, you're not going to get too excited about this. But anyway, next weekend, we're starting 21 days of prayer and fasting here in our church. And, and I know for, for some of you, you may be like, I don't know about this. I've never done anything like, I mean, like if I fast three hours, that's a long time, right? <laughs> Listen, don't let, it, don't let it alarm you. Understand the purpose. In fact, Pastor Darren and I did a conversational video. It's out on YouTube. It's on our website right now uh, about fasting. I want you to know the motive behind it is you emptying yourself before God and you're seeking him at a deeper level than you do in your normal prayer time. You want to hear from God. That's what our sister was talking about in the video today. We want, and that's what I'm going to preach to you about today. It's about hearing the voice of God. It's getting in alignment with him. And fasting sometimes helps us do that where, where it shocks us to get out of the system and we empty ourselves of something. Now, there's all kinds of different ways to fast. I'm not going to talk about that today. I'm going to talk about it next weekend. But I do want to say this. We have, our staff has written a book for you. And it is, it's excellent material and uh, it is available online right now. You can go download it right now at yourcpc.church. Go to our homepage. You'll see a banner that says 21 days of prayer and fasting. Click on it. You'll see a button that says download the book and you can download it. It'll immediately upload for you. And uh, there is a daily devotion for every day of the 21 days of prayer and fasting. Now, for those of you who hate electronic books and you've got to have a physical copy. Uh, they are shipped. They are on their way. They'll be here this next weekend. So next Sunday, we'll have a physical copy for some of you, uh, but we're going to ask most of you just to download the e-copy. We're also going to put links out every day during the fast. And, and while we're fasting together as a church, there's some things we're asking for. We're asking God to speak to us. Number one, that's the whole theme of the year. We want God to speak to us. We want to be led by his Holy Spirit. We want to grow deeper as a disciple of Jesus. That's what I'm preaching about, right? We want to be true disciples of Christ. Uh, we're also praying uh, for people who have needs and need a touch. We're praying for families that are broken or lives that, uh, that sin has just wrecked. And we, we know we serve a God of restoration. He heals homes. He heals marriages. He heals lives. He can touch your body. He can touch your mind. He can touch your spirit. How many believe God can do it all? Right. And, and so we're going to pray for one another to have breakthroughs in the Lord. We're also praying about what God wants each of us individually to do when it comes to MAD. Make a difference or make a difference Sunday offerings coming up in March. It's the highest goal we've ever had. It's not the highest giving you've ever done. Our goal this year is 500,000, but you gave 507,000 last year. You say, Pastor, why did we raise it up so high? Well, one, you gave a lot last year. Well, we can do it again. Say, look at your neighbor and say, I knew it was your fault. Uh, then, well, I just, uh, but look at our church. Look at what God's doing around here. Do you know, and I, 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 just, want to, I just want you to capture this. Do you understand that in the last seven weeks of our church, we have grown on average by over 360 more people in Sunday morning attendance and just on average. That's on average. God is just doing something supernatural here and and, and it's tight, we know. We need to build another road. We need to build another parking lot. We're working with architects on a full campus expansion. We'll have to add a third service at some point this year. We're looking at that. How's that gonna work until we can get the building done? Because we don't wanna hinder what God's doing. I told you before, I'll preach however many services we got to. If you keep inviting people and bringing them and they wanna hear the gospel, we'll do whatever it takes to get the gospel to them until we get to heaven. Say amen. So we're working, we're doing it. You keep inviting, and, uh, and the reason our goal is so high is because, you know, if you're new to our church, you, you may not know this, we, we give 10% of it away. Whatever the gift is on that Sunday, 10% of it goes away. We support church plants and missionaries and uh, local organizations, global organizations, national organizations. We have a seminary and a Bible college rather and a school in the Philippines that we are big supporters of. We support about 400 orphans in Belarus. We do all kinds of other works around the world. 10% uh, of whatever you give on Mad Sunday is going to go away. And it's going to be a blessing to other people. Amen? Amen? That's why we call it Mad. We're going to make a difference. 
But then we know that because of a full campus expansion, needing to build another parking lot and roads and all that stuff, man, that's not budgeted stuff. We need to raise as much cash as possible to pay down on all this construction that we got to do so we can keep getting the gospel to more people. Say amen. So I'm telling you right now how it's going to be used. Amen. It's going to be for the glory of God. and We're going to help people, but we're also going to make some space. Come on, somebody. And, and hey, if you like, I don't know, I like being tight. Go in the nursery this morning and tell them, all right? <laughs> I can guarantee you what's going to happen. You'll be serving there next Sunday. <laughs> Amen. Come on, somebody. So, so we're in a good season right now. Let's don't blow this. Let's don't mess this up. That's why I keep telling our staff, God's moving. Let's don't mess this thing up. Let's let the Holy Spirit have his way. In fact, would you pray that with me today? As we open our hearts, as we get ready to go into this word today, I'm going to talk to you about how important it is if you want to be a real disciple of Jesus, we must learn. And for all of us, it's still a learning process. But we must learn how to hear the voice of God. Would you pray with me? Come on, on campus, you can do it on, online. You can do it too, come on. Father, we love you. Thank you for this morning. Thank you for the time we had in worship and just singing your praises, singing about the God who's bigger than all our mountains. God, singing about our desire today just to hear you when you speak. Now, God, as we open the Bible, as we take the scriptures and we begin to study what your word says about this, help us have ears to hear what you're saying and eyes to see your wondrous truths and minds to comprehend and understand. And God, give us hearts full of faith to put it into action and actually to live it out. God, I pray for all of us that we'll grow deeper today. Some come to salvation, some come to recommitment, and all of us grow deeper in our walk with you. Father, I pray you bless everyone on this campus and everyone watching online right now or listening in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. So why 21 days of prayer and fasting? Well, 21, there's nothing super special about that. It's just a number we pick. We see it a lot. You know, it's, it's a good challenge. We know in the Bible there's threes and sevens everywhere. Take three and seven times three is 21. It's just a good number. Look at your neighbor and tell them you'll survive it. There's all kinds of ways to do the fast too, right? And you get in the book, you'll see all that. We'll talk more about that next week. But here's the deal. Why pray? Why fast? I think it was Jonathan Edwards who said the, that, when, that revival happens when God's people pray. How many believe in the power of prayer? God, God sends revival when his people begin to pray. Now, if it, and I, let's do a survey here this morning online. You can do this as well in the chats. Uh, how many of us would say that predominantly when we go to pray, we spend at least, now this, this is at least, all right, at least 90% of the time in prayer, we're doing the talking and maybe 10% or less, we let God speak back. How many would testify today that when you pray, come on, come on, come on. I see people bowing their heads now. I'm not asking you to pray right now and I'm not shaming you. I'm asking you to feed back to me a little bit. All right, so... When you pray, how many of you say most of the time when you pray, you spend most of the time doing the talking? Let's just say it that way, okay? We won't do a percentage. We all know that it's like 99%. All right, that's it. I'm the same way. And, uh, and, and let me ask you this. Is that the best way? Now, if you have any friendship, let's say you have, you're in a relationship with someone and, and every time you get together, your buddy does all the talking. I mean, all the talking. You never get a word in edgewise. Some of you real bad introverts, you probably like that, but, but for most of right, if they do all the talking and you never get to talk back, is that a healthy relationship? No, it's not a healthy relationship. And that's exactly what we do with God in prayer. We, we do most of the talking. And listen, I, I want to share this with you. In the days before Jesus came on the earth. So when you read in the Old Testament, in those days before Christ, God would speak to certain people at certain times. And, and here's what it was like, all right? And, and you read this over and over again. The Bible says something like this. And the Spirit of God came over him and said. Or the Spirit of God came over them and and said, God didn't just speak normally to people, uh, you know, they couldn't hear him on a normal basis. It was 
at specific moments to uh, specific people. It's hard to do that. And uh, it was God's moment when God would let his spirit come over someone. And watch this, watch this, watch this. God was speaking from the outside in. Elijah, all right, so Moses and Elijah are like the two greatest prophets in all the Old Testament and all of Jewish history. So Moses would be like Superman. Elijah would be like Batman, right? I mean, these are your two top superheroes of the Jewish faith. And I don't know if you know this or not, but like Elijah only ever, it's only recorded that God ever spoke and gave a specific miracle to Elijah seven times in his life. And this is like Batman to Superman. Like this is like, the top of the list, right? This is like one of God's greatest prophets. And here, I just want you to picture this in your mind. Can you imagine the confusion on the face of the disciples of Jesus one day when they sat with him and they didn't know it, but this is just a few hours before Judas is gonna betray the Lord and the Lord's gonna be crucified. Jesus, you can find this in John chapter 14. Jesus turns to his disciples, right? Watch this, watch this, watch this. And Jesus begins to tell them that there's coming a day when God will not come upon you at specific moments, at specific times to speak to you from the outside in, but there's coming a day when God is going to move inside of you and God is going to be in you all the time and God is going to speak from the inside out on a regular, frequent basis. And then, no, watch this, watch this. The disciples had never heard anything like that in their whole Jewish life. That didn't even make sense to them. And you can imagine the look on their face. And then Jesus said something like this. It's not on your notes. You can just jot it down if you want. John 14, 17. Jesus says, he, the spirit of truth, the world is unable to receive him because it doesn't see him or know him. But you will know him because he remains with you. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Listen, and he will be in you. And I will ask the Father, watch this, I'm gonna ask the Father and he's gonna give you another counselor to be with you, watch this, watch this, watch this, forever. So somebody shout a counselor with me, in me, forever. Somebody shout, that sounds like a pretty good deal, come on. And you know what a counselor does, right? A counselor does more than just listen. A good counselor knows how to listen, but a good counselor knows how to do more than just listen. They know how to write, ask the right questions. They, they know how to provoke you to come to the conclusion, watch this, watch this, watch this, that the counselor knows you need to come to. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. You think their questions are just general questions? No, no, no. They're asking them on purpose. They, a good counselor knows what questions to ask to get you to a conclusion that they know you need to come to. They lead you and they guide you. And watch what Jesus said. Jesus said, there's coming a day when I'm going to ask the Father and he's going to send you a counselor, one who's not going to only listen to you, but will also speak back to you. And he's going to ask you provoking questions. He's going to put impressions down upon your heart and he's going to guide you from the inside out who will be with you forever. And then Jesus said this in John 16, 7. Jesus says, nevertheless, I tell you, it is better for you that I'm going to go away. Watch this, watch this, watch this. For if I go away, I'll send him to you. Now, I don't know what it was like there that day, but in my CWV brain, in my mind, I can only imagine the disciples in utter amazement at what Jesus is saying. One of them had to have turned to someone else in the room and said, what's he talking about? How in the world can it be better for us for him to leave us? Because can you imagine what it was like to walk with Jesus for three years? Can you imagine? You get hungry, Jesus, I'm hungry. He said, okay, grab a, grab a stone. We can have fish. Jesus just said, hey, hey, get that little boy sack lunch. Let's have a buffet line. Jesus can do anything, right? It's a miracle. Somebody comes to him sick, huh? he just breathes on them. They're healed. The dude spit in a blind man's eyes and he saw. You know, you know the disciples, they were mostly teenagers. They were going around, Jesus is the coolest dude ever. I want to spit on somebody, right? Please don't do that. Preachers get in trouble for that on Twitter. I'll just say, anyway, anyway I'm going to move on. Um, <laughs> 
Let's move. Je- Listen, Jesus is so amazing. He's so awesome. He's preaching the gospel. He's healing the sick. He's there with them at night around the campfire. They can ask him any question. Can you imagine this? Ask God any question you want. And he's sitting there telling you stories to get the answer. How cool would that be? And then for Jesus to look at his disciples and say, God, I got something better for you. Man, I got something so good for you. It's going to rock your world. This is going to be amazing for you. You ain't going to believe it. But hey, wait, before I can send it to you, before I can give it to you, I got to leave you. And you know, there's some disciples going, I don't understand. You know what? Here we are 2,000 years later. And I got to say, for most of those Christian world, we understand Jesus. And he was only here 33 years. The Holy Spirit's been here 2,000 years. And we still argue and fight and try to figure out how in the world to relate and accept the person of the Holy Spirit. And if we could understand what he has come to do, it would change our world. Jesus said he has come to be our counselor. He was talking about the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. They couldn't understand this. And what what was actually happening here, catch this, catch this, catch this, is Jesus was telling them a fulfillment, watch this, watch this, a fulfillment to a a prophecy that Isaiah the prophet had given 700 years earlier. And no one for 700 years understood how this passage would ever come to pass. Here's what God was trying to tell him. I want you to say this out loud with me. It's there on your message notes. You don't have to fill it in. We filled it in for you. Look at it. Number one on your message notes. Come on online. Say it out loud together. Ready? Here's what Jesus is wanting us to understand. That even now, after Jesus has been crucified, resurrected, and ascended to the right hand of the Father, God still speaks. And look at Isaiah. Look at the prophecy 700 years earlier that Jesus was explaining was about to come to pass. Jesus said these words, read it with me, everyone, come on. But your teacher will not hide any longer. Your eyes will see your teacher. And whenever you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear this command behind you. This is the way, walk in it. Isaiah was giving the the Jewish people a prophecy that there was coming a day when God was going to restore his people and God was going to do such an amazing work in the lives of his people that they were going to not just have God come upon them or certain people at certain times, but there was going to come a day when they were going to get to walk so closely with God that as they walked down the street, the voice of God would be heard in their ear as if God was walking behind them. And when they needed to turn right or when they needed to turn left, they could have the voice of God speak in their ear and say, this is the way, this is the way, this is the way, this is the way. And this is exactly what Jesus was referring to when he said if he went away, he was gonna send the counselor to come. He was referring to his Holy Spirit who has now come upon the church and has been here since the day of Pentecost. In fact, I want you to look at this, write this down. How does God today speak to us? There's two primary methods that he will speak to us. Write these down. He speaks to us through his word and he speaks to us through his Holy Spirit. Now, there are some Christians who get all up into the word and say, this is the only way God still speaks. And then there are people on the other side of the extreme that don't even get into the word, but all their emotions, whatever emotional feeling they have, they say, oh, the Spirit's speaking. And I want to tell you, neither camp is right. God speaks through his word by his Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit's not going to lead you contrary to the word of God, and the word of God's not going to lead you contrary to the spirit of God. They're going to work in conjunction, and Jesus explains this to us. Look with me on your message notes in John chapter 14. Here's what Jesus says to his disciples. Come on. But the counselor, somebody shout counselor. Does counselors listen? Yes. Do counselors also speak? Yes, here we go. But the counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, circle this, what will he do? He will teach you all things. Watch this, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't don't stop reading, gotta keep going. And he will circle it, remind you. 
Now, wait a minute. What's he going to teach and what's he going to remind you? Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Say this last line. Ready? Go. Of everything I have told you. So watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Where do we know the words of Jesus? Where do we get what God has said? Where do we find where Jesus has spoken? It's through the Bible. Listen, if you want to hear the voice of God in your life, you have to become a student of Scripture. You cannot hear the voice of God. You can't discern if it is the voice of God outside of Scripture because you could, all right, come on, it could be pizza. It could be tacos. Come on, it could just be your emotions or your personal persuasions or your personal preference. Can, do, can, can we all agree on that? It doesn't matter what camp you came out of, doesn't matter what your experiences have been, I'm telling you, you've got to be able to discern between your emotions and your flesh and the Spirit of God and, and the way we do that. We've got to get into the book because the Spirit won't lead us against the Scriptures and the Scriptures won't lead us against the Holy Spirit. They're going to work together because here's what Jesus said. Jesus says, you get into my word, you get my word inside you, watch this, watch this, watch this. So he will take the, whole, the word of God and the Holy Spirit will remind you of what I've said. Now, is he just confirming something old? No. He's speaking a new living word through the word because the word of God, John chapter 1 tells us, is living. Hebrews tells us this is the living word of God. This is why you can read these scriptures today and you can get biblical truths, principles that are applicable to your daily life today that is as fresh as if God printed the book this morning. Every other piece of literature in ancient writings is dated. The Bible isn't dated. It's still as relevant today as it's always been and it always shall be because it is written by the Holy Spirit and it is confirmed by the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit of God will take the word of God and if you will read it and study it and listen to it, listen to me, I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit will make it come alive inside of you. God speaks to us primarily to two sources. He'll speak to you through the word. You can just get in the word and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit says, you see that? And then you can be over here worshiping and asking the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you. And you know what the Holy Spirit will do? As he tells you this is the way, he'll speak a word to you that will be confirmed in the book. Are you with me? Listen to what Jesus said again, John 16, verse 13 through 14. Read it with me out loud, ready to go. When the spirit of truth comes, and he has already come, by the way, so you don't read that and say, oh, I can't wait for the spirit to come down. He's already come. And since Pentecost, now he moves inside of you at the moment of your conversion. You're not gonna get more of him, but you need to give him more of you. And that's what Paul talks about, about being filled with the spirit. We need to be constantly being filled with more and more. And you say, I'm getting more of him. No, no, no. You're giving yourself more over to him. Let him have more control of you and let him lead you and guide you and anoint you and, and use you. Watch this. And when the spirit of truth comes, he will say the next two words. Say them out loud. Ready to go. Guide you. He'll guide you into all truth. Can you trust the Holy Spirit? Yes, because he, watch this, watch this, watch this. I love this. Jesus says the Holy Spirit will not speak on his own. He will say the next phrase. He will speak whatever he hears and he'll declare to you what is to come. And he will read the next two words, say them, circle it. Glorify me because he will take what is mine and he will declare it to you. So here's the question, does God still speak? Yes, he speaks through his word and he speaks through his spirit. Here's how you know the Holy Spirit speaking to you. Number one, the Holy Spirit never glorifies himself. He only glorifies Jesus. The Holy Spirit will never say, go, go brag on me. He will say, go brag on Jesus. And the Holy Spirit of God will take the word of God and make it come alive in you. The Holy Spirit of God will bring impressions down upon your soul this is where the scripture says in Philippians chapter four, God can give us a peace that passes understanding. How many has ever tried to hear from God and your brain won't shut off and it keeps messing it all up? And, and so what you gotta do in that moment is you gotta pray for the spirit to speak to you and he won't always make your brain understand it, but there will be an impression down on your soul, down in your gut, and you just know that you know that you know the Lord is speaking to me right now. He's telling me to walk in this path. He's telling me which steps to take. He will even reveal mysterious ways. How many love, love it when God just does the 
something so undeniable, you're like, that had to be God. That just had to be God. He will speak to you in undeniable ways. Here's the deal. I want you to write this down. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. If you want to hear from God, don't miss this. To hear from God, you've got to be in a relationship with God. Listen, you can be as religious as you want to be. Never miss church. Never miss your daily Bible reading. Pray 10 times a day. Fast. Give tithes. And never hear from God. It's not because God doesn't want to speak to you. But if your relationship is waning, if it's not true for you, if you're not listening for his voice, if you're just going through religious ordeal, if you're just doing the religious checklist, you're probably not going to be able to hear from him because it's an intimate conversation. It's relationship. God invites you into a relationship. God is inviting you into a relationship and if you're in a relationship with him, you will hear him. Look at what Jesus said. Let's just throw some verses on the screen for you. Here's John 8, 47. Read with me. Anyone who belongs to God listens gladly to the words of God. So if you're in a relationship with God, you want to hear what God's got to say. You want to get in the word. You're in moments like this, you're all ears. You, you want to hear what God has to say. Let's look at another verse. Here's John 10. Jesus said this, and my sheep listen to my voice. Wait a minute, does that mean God still speaks? Can we hear the voice of God? My sheep hear my, listen to my voice, I know them, and they follow me. So can we still hear God speak? The answer has to be yes. Here's, here's what we gotta do, write this down. Number two, we've gotta learn the discipline of listening. We've got to learn the discipline of listening. I love to read about David in the Bible. David lived about a thousand years before Christ. He is the one man the Bible gives this testimony. He, is a, he was a man after God's own heart. Now, if you read the life of David, you find out David wasn't perfect. David was far from perfect. David messed up a lot. In our cancel culture of today, David would have been kicked out, thrown off line, never to be heard of again. But here's why I believe the Bible calls David a man after God's own heart. It's not because he did everything right. He did not. But every time he failed, he kept coming back and throwing himself at the feet of God in repentance. And he would ask for forgiveness and he would have to publicly own up at times to his sin. And he kept seeking the heart of God. When you turn to Psalm 119, and listen, I'll just challenge you. If you ever just want to sit down and take 30 minutes, because it's a long passage, it's the longest chapter in the whole Bible. But if you just want to read devotionally and be inspired about hearing the voice of God and hiding the word of God in your heart, read Psalm 119. In Psalm 119, here's what David says. Just a couple of things here. Look at it with me. Take your pen. We're going to circle some things here. David said, I have hidden your word in my heart. Circle that. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Watch this. I have recited aloud the regulations you have given us. Look at this. I study your commandments. Watch this. Open my eyes to see the wondrous truth in your instructions, in your word. So, so David knew how to prepare himself to hear the voice of God. He didn't always obey it. He didn't always do the right thing. He was a sinner. Thank God for grace. Look at your neighbor and tell him, thank God for grace. You better do that. All right, so I'm joking. We all ought to thank God for grace, amen? amen? But he had this ability to set himself up. He knew how to discipline himself to hear the voice of God. And I want to challenge you to follow this pattern over these next 21 days as we start prayer and fasting next week, next Sunday. Look at this, circle this. He said, I hid the word of God in my heart. What did he do? He would get into the word of God and then he would, he would just meditate on a passage. He, he would just, it, maybe it was one verse, but he would take a, a, a scripture of the Old Testament. He would take something from the word of God and he would hide it in his heart. He would meditate on it. I want to challenge you to do that. When you, find a, when you go to the scriptures, hide some of it in your heart. Meditate on it. Then he would say, I recite it out loud. I want to tell you, you want to know something powerful? Something's powerful is in your own private prayer time. 
is just start reading the Bible out loud. It's something, you're like, there ain't nobody here to hear it. I can read without saying it out loud. I know, I do that. But every once in a while, take the scriptures and just start reading it out loud. And it's so powerful when your own ears hear your voice declaring the word of God. Just start reciting the word out loud. Just start reading out loud all by yourself. Let your ears hear what you are believing. And then he says, I study your commandments. There are certain times we don't just need to read through a passage. We need to find a few verses and stop. And we need to underline and we need to circle. You know, the reason I have you do that is in my own private way, I'm trying to teach you how to look for the principles and the keys in a scripture verse when you're reading it. I want, I want it to start leaping off the page at you. And I want you to say, oh, whoa, look at that. And start circling and underlining and just meditate on it. David said, that's what I do. He says, I just meditate on the word. I hide it in my heart and then I recite it. And then he says, at times I just study it and look at his prayer. Here's the prayer of David when he got into the scriptures, when he got into the word of God. And over these next 21 days, I'm going to challenge you to do this very thing. That every day when you read the devotion or every day when you read a passage out of the Bible, pray the prayer of David. Let's say it out loud together. It's verse 18. They're ready to go. Open my eyes to see the wondrous truths in your instructions. God, I'm about to go into the word. Open my eyes and let me see. Let the Holy Spirit speak in my ear what you want to say. Amen? Now, here's what you're going to have to do. <laughs> you're going to have to beware of distractions. Because if the devil knows that you're about to spend some time alone with God and get in his word and God's going to speak to you, do you think the devil wants you to hear what he's got to say? Look at your neighbor and tell him, the devil doesn't like you that much. He doesn't want you to hear what, what God's got to say to you. So what's he going to do? He's going to let your cell phone ding. And you're going to think, I've got to check social media. If I don't check social media right now, I'm going to miss the greatest piece of information the world has ever known. I got to check the score. Your kids are going to scream your name. Your husband's going to come in, won't know where his socks are. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be chaos, I'm telling you. You got to beware of those distractions and be specific. Set some moments apart. <clears throat> Here's what I'm going to challenge you to do. <clears throat> Excuse me. Find ways to find solitude over the next 21 days. <clears throat> may not be long. Maybe 15 minutes, could be an hour. But you have to discipline yourself to listen. It's a discipline. Some of you, your, your day's so, so messed up already, you're gonna have to get up 15 minutes early or stay up 15 minutes late. Some of you, you're gonna have to quit going out with the guys for lunch and you're gonna have to take 15 minutes of your lunch break and say, hey, I, I just gotta get off to myself for a few minutes. I, I don't know what it's gonna look like for you and no one can give you the answer to this. It's gotta be up to you and you've gotta want this. If you wanna hear the voice of God, you've gotta want this and, and you need to find some solitude. Do you know that Jesus in the gospels, that Jesus when he was so busy in the ministry and people were coming to him from everywhere, over and over and over again, the Bible tells us that Jesus would slip off in the early morning hours and find a mountain to pray and he would go off into solitude and he would come back to the disciples and say, the Father has told me where we're to go next. Why did Jesus, the Son of God, have to find solitude? Because you can't hear the voice of God in the noise. I told you about Elijah, Elijah earlier. You know, when Elijah was up on the mountain after Mount Carmel's miracle, there was an earthquake, there was thunder, there was lightning, there was a windstorm, a tornado, and in all the noise, here's what the Bible says, the voice of God was not in the noise. And then a small, still voice. And Elijah wrapped his mantle around his face because he heard the voice of God. You got to get out of the noise, turn off your radio. You know, that, listen, for me personally, driving is a great time to hear the voice of God, to talk to God. Turn off the radio. I'm in the car all the time. Turn it off and just get alone with God. 
You can hear God and watch street signs at the same time. It is possible, I'm telling you. I only have to turn around two or three times a day and miss my road. That's all right. This past week, I was with a group of pastors uh, in, in a couple of different states uh, from all over the country. And in both of the occasions that I was at with these group of pastors, what I saw was is a hunger among preachers today just to hear the voice of God. And I believe God's doing something right now in our world. I believe this is a time for us to hear from God for such a time as this. Uh, next week, I'm going to tell you about something happening really cool right now in Kentucky. I know of all places, right? But there's something really cool I want to talk to you about next week. But uh, uh, one, one of the times I was with, I was with a group that was being led by a, a guy that, by God's grace, I've been able to develop a friendship with over this past year, Robbie Gallaty. And he's uh, the pastor at Long Hollow Church down in Hendersonville, Tennessee. And back in 2020, Robbie will tell you that he was going through a really difficult time while the churches were being shut down for COVID and he was just struggling. And God took him on a journey. Watch this. God took him on a journey of just getting quiet before the Lord every evening on his back porch. And Robbie would tell you he spent 90% of his time in prayer talking and maybe 10% if, if good, if on a good day of listening to God. He said he just never practiced that. And for 10 months, God had him sitting on his back porch. And for an hour to an hour and a half every day, God wouldn't let him say anything. He just had to sit there and listen. He said, it was so weird at first, trying to hear the voice of God. Take a Bible passage, read through the scriptures, pray, and then just get silent before God. After about 10 months of just learning how to get silent and turn off the noise and just start hearing God put impressions on his heart or bring scriptures to his mind or giving direction by the Holy Spirit. He said he was, they had opened church back up and he was getting ready to go in. And, and the Holy Spirit told him, I want you to do spontaneous baptism Sunday, and I want you to believe for 100 people being baptized. And the thing about Long Hollow is they're not accustomed to spontaneous baptisms at the time, all right? And, and, and he's got a church of about seven, 8,000 people. And he's like, I don't know, man, we don't, we don't do that around here. And he went into church that day, and he just got up, and he said, man, I just, I got to tell you what the Lord's telling me. The Lord's telling me to open up this baptistry today. And if you need to be saved, come on down. We'll baptize you this morning. And he said, I'm believing for 100 people. And at the end of the day, 99 people were baptized that day. He thought it was over. He's like, whoa, God, look at God. Next Sunday, he came to church. He's sitting there while the worship team is singing worship. And he said, the Holy Spirit spoke to him and said, I want you to open up the baptistry again today. And he's like, we didn't prepare for this. And he's texting his staff and he's saying, can we do this? And they're like, whatever you say, pastor. And, and so he gets up in front of the crowd and just says, hey, I just tell you, the Lord said, I got to open up the baptistry again. This went on, watch this, watch this, for 15 solid weeks. And they baptized over a thousand new believers in 15 weeks. And Robbie attributes every bit of it. And they're still enjoying revival to this day at Long Hollow um, so I give him a shout out, but he attributes all of it today to sitting quiet before God and just learning to hear God speak. How many of you want to hear God speak in your life? I want revival to happen in your life. I want revival to happen in your family. I want revival to happen with your children. I want, I want revival in your marriage. I want to see God do a revival in your career. I want, I want to see God do a revival in our children and in our students and in our college age and young adults and in every adult in this building and watching online. I want to see God do the miraculous. We, pr we say around here in this church, we want God to do a work here that only God can get the glory for. And I'll tell you how it's going to happen. When you and I get so serious about being disciples of Jesus that we're willing to find some solitude and get quiet before God and let the Spirit of God speak to us. Amen. Man, oh man. Look, tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, look out. You don't know what's coming, what God's going to do next. Amen. Now, so take these 21 days of prayer and fasting and find solitude and ask God to speak to you. Would you do that for me? Would you do that for our church? Now, here's what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to be able to, number three, write this down. Test if the Spirit of God is speaking to you, though. Because like I said, there's been a lot of things said in the name of Jesus that was never led by the Holy Spirit. There's been a lot of things where people have said through emotion and personal preference, hey, I believe the Lord has said, and the Lord never said it. 
Do you know the Bible says Satan can appear like an angel of light to deceive the elect if it were possible? So how are you going to discern when an impression comes? How are you going to discern your feet when you're hearing and you feel like you're hearing from God? Well, there is a litmus test, and this is going to help you. 1 John 4, 1 says, dear friends, don't believe every spirit, test the spirit. So write this down. We have to test, we have to learn how to test the voices that we're hearing. James, the half-brother of Jesus, said this in James chapter 3, verse 14 through 17. Look at it up here on the, line, uh, on the screens. Let's read it out loud together. And I want you to pick out some key characteristics here. You ready? But if you are, watch this, bitterly jealous, or there is selfish ambition in your heart, don't cover up the truth with boasting and lying for, watch this, jealousy and selfishness are not God's kind of wisdom. So, so if you feel like, man, I'm praying, I'm seeking God, and you're being so specific with God that God's got to line up with you or God's wrong, or, or you're just wanting to prove your point to someone, or you're praying selfish prayers, or you're praying for revenge on someone, let's put the verse back up there. Look at that line there. I can tell you right now that will not be God's kind of wisdom for you. God didn't say that. Such things are earthly, unspiritual, and look at this, look at this, look at this. Be careful. Those are demonic. If it's off of jealousy or selfishness, it's demonic. For wherever there is jealousy and selfish ambition, there, will be, uh, there you'll find every disorder and evil of every kind. Here's what comes from God. Ready? The wisdom that's from above is, first of all, say it, pure. It is also, say it, peace-loving. Next, gentle at all times and willing to... Yield to others. It is full of mercy. It is the fruit of good deeds. It shows no favoritism and it's always sincere. So write these down. When you are praying and you're hearing the voice of God, ask these questions. Wow, does this honor God? Does this honor God or are you honoring yourself? Does this honor God? Secondly, does this align with scripture? Remember the Holy Spirit takes the word of God and makes it come alive to you. Does this align with scripture? Don't take a verse out of context, the totality of what scripture teaches on the subject. Don't take a verse out of, script, out of don't twist scripture to fit your, what you want to say. Take the totality of scripture. Does this align with scripture? Number three, is it pure? Would God call this pure? So it got the right motives for, is it confirmed by either scripture or other believers? Here's what I know, congregation. Here's what I know. Here's what I believe with all of my soul. It's your big takeaway for the day. I believe God still speaks. I believe God wants to speak to you and he wants you to learn the discipline of listening and I believe if you and I learn the discipline of listening, we'll be amazed at how God's going to lead our lives, how he'll lead our church, the impact that we can make together for the kingdom of God. Please hear me. Please hear my heart on this. I told you earlier, we'll build onto the building. We'll add the third service. We'll do whatever it takes. Please hear my heart on this. It is not so we can walk around and tell people, look how big our church is. If that's the motive, God, stop it today. But if it's because we realize there are still thousands of people in southeast Missouri that can drive to Jackson who need Jesus, whose marriages need Jesus, whose kids need Jesus, who need to find forgiveness of their sins and the hope of eternal life. If, if we still believe that the church exists to reach the ones who are far from God, and that's why we'll add on to this place, not to make you comfortable. I don't care if you're comfortable. I'm sorry. I care about that next lost person having a seat to come in here and get saved. I don't like you being comfortable. You get comfortable, you start thinking this is about you. 
Yeah, you get too comfortable, we're going to put Holy Ghost briars in your seats. <laughs> Amen. And the deacons will do it, I'm telling you. If we're about winning more people to Jesus, then God, come on. Do it. Are you with me? Please know the motive. Here's what I believe with all my heart. I want you to write this down. If you and I will pursue God, say that with me. Shout pursue. pursue. Say it again. Shout pursue. pursue. I don't want you to even whisper it. I want you to shout it. Shout pursue. pursue. If we'll pursue God, we will hear God. Here's what he promises. Read the last verse with me as you stand. Jeremiah 29, 13. You will seek me. You will find me. When you search for me with all of your heart. If that's you today, would you lift up holy hands to the Lord all over this room, watching online, you join us right now. Can we just lift up holy hands to the Lord? Can we just make that our prayer today? God, this is our desire. We want to pursue you. We want to hear you when you speak. God, we want every person here to be able to devote themselves to prayer and to your word and to solitude at times so that Lord, when they're driving down the street and their hearts are broken, their minds are weighed with burdens. When nothing feels spiritual in their lives in that moment, I want them to be able to turn off their radio and cry out to you and say, God, I need a word from you. And because they have been pursuing you, because they have been disciplined to pray and to read scripture and to have solitude with you. God, it's in that moment while they're driving down the road and their hearts are broken that you'll speak. And they'll never be the same again. It's in those moments, God, in the midnight hour when a, a parent is crying out for their child or a spouse for their helpmate or college student seeking direction. That God, if they've been practicing the discipline of hearing you, you will speak to them at the right moment. And it makes all the difference in the world. So God, help us today to long to hear your voice, to discipline ourselves and set ourselves up in a position to hear you when you speak. Heads are bowed, no one's looking around. There's some of you in this room today that the Holy Spirit's telling you today is the day for you to surrender your life and be saved. And there's others of you who've grown cold in your faith and the Holy Spirit's saying today's the day for you to recommit to Jesus. I want to lead you in a prayer. You may be watching online. I want to lead you in a prayer. I can't pray it for you. And here's what's going to happen. At the end of this prayer, the host is going to come out. We're going to start dismissing the service. But there's going to be people at these altars that if that's you today and you need to come talk to someone, you need to come tell them that you're giving your heart back to the Lord today or giving it to the Lord, they're going to pray with you. Or you need to find a care connection work out in the lobby. And they're going to go off and they're going to talk to you and pray with you and encourage you. You know, online, you need to tell one of the online pastors right now, and they're going to talk to you online. They're going to pray with you. Today's a day of salvation for you. God's calling you. Will you listen and will you respond? Would you pray this prayer? Lord Jesus, I give you my heart. I give you my life right here, right now. The best I know how by faith, I ask you to forgive my sin. Come into my heart. Cleanse me and fill me with your presence. From this day forward, I commit my life to following you. I receive you now in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. come on, let's give God a praise today. How many of you are glad you made it to the house this morning? Hey, listen, if you prayed that prayer with Pastor Chris, we have a gift we want to give you. You'll see some people out in the lobby holding these red bags up. Feel free to go get one on us. If you're watching online, let us know. We'll get you these resources. We love you all. We'll see you next week on Sunday.